Hello my photography friends, I am still here in Japan, but today a video I am inside talking about a topic that I've wanted to make a video for quite some time. I will put some photos and footage from this trip throughout the video to hopefully keep it interesting, but today talking about a powerful camera mode that can really help assist with your photography. Of course, I'm talking about aperture priority. So that's it, a whole video talking about aperture priority. Well, yes, I did want to talk about exactly why I use it. All the settings you can dial in your camera to really get the most out of using aperture priority and how it might benefit and help you with your photography like it does for me. So you can use it to your advantage, get your camera to do some of the work for you and always get the desired result you're after. Certainly when it comes to photography, there's no right or wrong way how you choose to dial in your settings as long as you can get that desired result that you're after. So this certainly isn't the only way, I'm not saying it's the best way, I think it's probably the best way for me and what works for me. So hopefully you'll find it useful as well. Whether you are a beginner or more experienced photographer, I think there's still lots of valuable tips in this video. So let's jump in. So for as long as I can remember now, I've largely shot in aperture priority, probably for 90% of the shots I take and especially for street photography. But it is true when I first started out, I thought full manual modes were the only professional way to take photos. That was for about a year or two. I was still shooting in aperture priority, but I saw this article from a very high up professional in wedding photography back home. And they were talking about how they use aperture priority to make sure they never miss any moments or not fumbling on their settings. And to me, I still remember this clearly because it helped cement to me that Aperture priority wasn't just for beginners, it was a valuable tool for professionals as well. So regardless of what camera you're using, aperture priority should be quite easy to find, simply called AV mode here on Canon, or just put auto shutter on something like a Fuji camera. This allows us to simply select our aperture value and then the camera will automatically come up with the shutter speed based on the exposure meter and reading out the scene. Importantly here, whatever metering mode you are using is quite crucial here and is important to understand. So we'll touch on that later in the video. In aperture priority, we can also choose to set our ISO or use auto ISO. So the reason I choose aperture priority is a pretty simple one. For 90% of the shots I take, the exact shutter speed isn't that important as long as it's fast enough. So once it gets above a certain shutter speed, the result isn't going to change too much within a very large range of settings. Here, simply the result is to freeze a moment in time. So not something that I wanna waste time in having to change my settings for every different photo I take. Of course, I do still like to play around with more creative, slower shutter speeds, but that takes up a much smaller percentage of the overall shots I take. So here, when we're just wanting to freeze motion it's helpful to get your camera to basically do some of the work for you we can take this cognitive load off ourselves even further by dialing in two specific settings the first one is setting a minimum shutter speed so you can do this on most cameras making sure you never get blurry shots and secondly if you are using auto ISO you can also set your maximum ISO number which is particularly useful. This is great when you're moving quickly between different scenes and means you don't have to think too much. You can really just focus on getting your composition right. For minimum shutter speed during daylight, something like one over 200 works well. Then at night, I might even drop this to one over 125. This does depend on a few things like how fast things are moving in your scene and also whether you have IS on the lens or IBIS in the camera. Setting my maximum ISO, especially at night, mirrorless cameras are getting really great at dealing with higher ISO numbers. So I often set mine to 6400 at night, which can be a good starting point for you. Of course, when you are shooting in aperture priority, the most important decision to make can be which aperture to choose. For me, during daylight, walking around for street photography, I tend to keep my camera set at around f4 or f5.6 for longer focal lengths. If you watched my last video, you might notice that probably 95% of the shots were at f4. 
and that's the reason for this. So this is what I would call my base aperture. My camera will be set to this as I'm walking around and then I can quickly adjust up or down from there if I need to. The reason I opt for f4 for my base aperture is simple. During daylight it allows for fast enough shutter speeds, it gives that slight separation between subject and background, it also means when shooting fast and quickly it will allow for slight misses in focus which is useful for street photography. So moving on to wider apertures with a more shallow depth of field and when I would use these. During normal lighting I would opt for these when I want the subject to really stand out against the background which can be useful to focus in on particular emotions or details clearly. So starting from f4 I can quickly open up from this and then usually go back to f4 afterwards ready for the next scene. These wider apertures are also ideal obviously for low light situations like shooting at night where they can be essential to help get a fast enough shutter speed to freeze time. And lastly our more narrower apertures. These are good in harsh light conditions but I usually opt for these when I want almost everything in focus. This is where I usually opt for f11. I do like to take a few landscape photos so this is great for that as well but also for some street scenes where I want everything sharp and in focus. Also anything you're unsure if you might nail focus fast enough. These shots waiting for basically some feet to step into my frame. Having this wider range in focus can ensure you don't miss anything. So I might opt again for F11 or F8. When it comes to using the exposure meter in Aperture Priority, the mistake I often made starting out was always shooting underexposed. You've probably heard this advice before, shoot underexposed to make sure you're not clipping your highlights. And although this can be useful in some situations, it's not useful in every situation. So this is my guide to using the exposure meter and what I would do in slightly different conditions. Daylight shots, I can sit anywhere from around negative 0.6 or plus 0.3, but most frequently, probably at around negative 0.3. I find this works best for most sunny conditions. Where this might not work is on your cloudier or more moody days. So here I will often shoot slightly overexposed at around plus 0.3, or even up to plus 0.6 in some conditions. A flatter scene like this without bright highlights, you're typically not clipping anything. Lastly, at night, this is where I often shoot more underexposed depending on how bright the lights in the scene are. So anything from around negative one to negative 0.3 again. Sometimes even more, but usually within this range works best. This just allows you to keep the details in those bright lights in the scene. When shooting in aperture priority and using the exposure meter, it is very important to understand how your camera is actually reading out that exposure. So this is what we call our different metering modes. Now, I'll go through this quite quickly because I typically only mostly use one and then just use my exposure compensation from there. So the one I predominantly use probably like most people is evaluative metering or multi-segment metering and this is definitely the most common mode. This will base the exposure off the entire scene and this is why it works best for most situations. Of course on some occasions especially when you have a scene with dramatically different bright highlights and dark shadows like shooting out a window here for example or those scenes where you've got a really bright patch of light this is where things like spot metering or center weighted metering can actually work really well. This will help expose your scene largely more off the highlights and keep those shadows dark like they should be and not let your camera overcompensate to try and adjust for the entire scene. So in these modes, your camera will base the exposure more off that area chosen rather than the entire scene. What I personally like to do rather than be able to change these metering modes is just really bring down my exposure compensation. So for these type of scenes, if I'm just doing it quickly and then moving on to the next scene, rather than having to change my camera back and forth in terms of the metering mode, I find it much quicker to just pull down my exposure. So in these conditions, I might even be shooting at negative two sometimes if there's a really high contrasted scene. It's just quicker for me to bring that down and then bring it back for the next scene ready to go. However, if I'm taking a similar type of shot over and over, like out a train window, for example, if I'm sitting there taking photos as I'm riding a train, this is where I will often change to spot metering and use something called the AE lock. 
So this is this little asterisk on Canon and this will lock your exposure for a short period of time. So I can aim my camera out the window, center that spot meter on those highlights out the window and then lock those settings. So now even if I move the camera, it will stay on those settings for a short period of time. So that works quite well for those situations, but definitely play around what works for you and have that understanding of the different metering modes. I know a lot of people who change these frequently. For me, I would much rather just quickly change my exposure compensation, but play around and see what works for you. But that's about it for Aperture Priority. I think if you are using full manual modes with practice, you can get really fast, but if speed is the name of the game, it really is hard to go past Aperture Priority. But if you have a different method, let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. Keep on creating and keep on growing, my friends. I will catch you in the next one. Still here in Japan. Bye for now.